people ask me, you know, you should be writing or why aren't you writing or something like that. And I, I really never regarded writing songs as a career or something that I did full time. 37 songs in 20 years is hardly what I would recall a career. But what would happen, well, I never sat down the way a songwriter would do to say, well, today I'm going to write a song. Today I will write a funny song. If I got an idea for a song, I would write it. And if I didn't get an idea, I wouldn't write it, but it wouldn't bother me. I wouldn't consider it writer's block or anything like that. So as the years went by, the latter condition of not coming up with funny ideas prevailed over the former. And so I just haven't written anything. But it isn't. if I thought of a funny idea, I would not restrain myself from writing it. Even if I wrote some more songs, I wouldn't perform them. I mean, I, I really have no interest in that. I would perform them once or twice to get them right before an audience, perhaps, but I have no desire to resume a performing career, certainly. That was not my idea of a good time. For one thing, I'm not an, a night person, and night and you, that's really an evening profession. I'm just when the evening was, you were looking forward to a nice dinner and a pleasant evening, that was when you had to go to work. I, I didn't like that at all. I was not an unhappy performer at all when I was doing it. I enjoyed it, uh, but up to a point. And after the first 500 times or whatever, then it became a matter of simulating it. And I think you have to do that. I can't imagine somebody doing the same show night after night. I, I've never understood people like Yul Brynner doing The King and I or Rex Harrison doing My Fair Lady night after night after night and getting something out of it. But I didn't perform that much, really. I, I added it up recently. I'd done about 109 concerts, I believe, in my entire career over a period of many years. <laughs> so it was not a, not a full-time job. And so I could get the energy out to do that. It was only an hour and a half, and it was fairly painless. So get out there, turn it on, and turn it off. And I think I could certainly simulate delight and, and it was. It was very pleasant. I think comics want people to go home thinking, wasn't he funny or wasn't she funny? I wanted people to go home thinking, weren't those songs funny? And so I would perform them until I got them right, till I got the timing right and make sure I, it was all right. And then I would make the record and that would be it. Then they would go home and play the record. And it seemed to make not much sense to me to get out there night after night and do this, even though the audience might change, any more than if I were a novelist, I would find it silly to get out and read my novel every night to people. They should just buy it and take it home and listen to it. So I was never tempted to do that. Also, I... I find that I don't have that need for anonymous affection that performers seem to have. They want people they never are going to meet applauding. And then if the audience does not applaud or does not laugh, then they get very angry, these performers do, as if somehow they're entitled to this. So I just wanted to play for a friendly audience for a while, and then I'd been everywhere and done that. And as I've often said, if you've been to Cincinnati, there's no need to go to Cleveland. And in 1960, I realized that I had no desire to do that. I then quit. To me, that's, that's very important. So many people write humorous songs that the joke is the song, and there's nothing really added by making it into a song. And part of the fun is to have internal rhymes. Stephen Sondheim is the master of this, too, as, and Gilbert was, too. Sondheim said it, it shores up the lyrics. It makes it more interesting. It makes you want to hear it more than once, which I think is the, the criterion for an interesting humorous song. It's not so much how funny it is, but whether you want to hear it again. And there are plenty of humorous songs which, again, have a funny joke, but... You wouldn't want to hear them again. But if they're internal rhymes and clever wordplay, that makes it much more interesting to me anyway, which is, no, I'm writing really for me, so that's what counts. When I quit, basically, in 1960 and put out the last records out of all the stuff that I had accumulated by that time, I assumed that would be the end of my career as a performer and as a songwriter. And the American version of That Was the Week That Was came on in 1964, and they were using original songs, and I thought, oh, I can do as well as that. So I sent in some occasional songs, and they used some of them, usually removing the best line. There was, every year, there, there was this week called National Brotherhood Week, and I got this idea of a song, but I had no idea when National Brotherhood Week was. And I called a friend of mine at the local newspaper and asked him to look it up, and it turned out it was next week much to my amazement. So I immediately got to work and wrote the song and sent it in, and they used it. And that was the first one that they, of my songs that they actually used. The songs that I wrote for That Was Week That Was were about things that had happened that week. It, it, there was a song called Pollution, which is fairly general, but it was nevertheless about some controversy that was just occurring that week about dumping stuff into the Hudson River in Troy, New York, and that we were eating it in New York City. And most of the songs, I think nine of the 14 songs on that record were about something that had happened just that week. And I had no idea that many years later they would still be popular. But as a friend of mine once said, always predict the worst and you will be hailed as a prophet. If you 
visit American City. You will find it very pretty. Just two things of which you must beware. Don't drink the water and don't breathe the air. Pollution, pollution, we got smog and sewage and mud. Turn on your tap and get hot and cold running crud. The halibuts and the sturgeons Being wiped out by detergents Fish gotta swim and birds gotta fly But they don't last long if they try Pollution, pollution You can use the latest toothpaste And then rinse your mouth with industrial waste Just go out for a breath of air And you'll be ready for Medicare The city streets are really quite a thrill If the hoods don't get you, the monoxide will Pollution, pollution Wear a gas mask and a veil Then you can breathe long as you don't inhale Lots of things there that you can drink but stay away from the kitchen sink Throw out your breakfast garbage And I've got a hunch That the folks downstream will drink it for lunch So go to the city See the crazy people there Like lambs to the slaughter They're drinking the water and breathing <laughs> the air. I had enough songs for a record if I added a few that I had accumulated in the meantime. And so I put that out in 1965, but again, with no intention of doing anything after that, and I, I've kept to that. I did a few concerts at that time and uh, some fundraising for hopeless causes and losing politicians. Uh, but 1972 was absolutely my last performance of any kind, so that's a long time. Yeah. 